Hello and Namaste. Let us now try to answer the question, who exactly is an observer? This question has been hotly debated ever since quantum physics discovered that an observer is required to bring particles into existence. At first, scientists tried to answer this question by excluding consciousness. They said, it is not a conscious observer that brings particles into existence. It is the devices used to observe them that bring the particles into existence. Any device like a detector, video camera or any other equipment capable of looking at a particle can be thought of as an observer. Not that this made a lot of sense, but at least the thorny issue of consciousness was removed. However, this theory has been disproven by several subsequent experiments. Scientists tried so many ways to rule out consciousness from quantum physics and failed miserably. I have discussed some of these experiments in my post titled, Does the Moon Exist When No One Is Watching? I have provided a link to that post in the description of this video. All these experiments proved that an inanimate detector or a measuring device is not responsible for bringing particles into existence. It is a conscious observer who brings particles into existence. These experiments also revealed how indispensable consciousness is in shaping reality. For those of you who feel these experiments are too hard to understand, I will explain them using an analogy. Let us assume a particle is a ghost living in a haunted house. A ghost is just a shadow, a shapeless, formless entity which cannot really be defined. A particle is just like a ghost before it is observed. It does not have a shape or a form or a location or any other attributes. We just don't know what it is. The haunted house represents the experiment within which the particle moves. Whenever someone enters the house and tries to see the ghost, it takes on a human form. This human form can be equated to a particle which has a definite shape, size, location and momentum. The ghost takes this form only when someone looks at it. When no one is looking, it goes back to being a formless, shapeless ghost again. One day, a skilled ghost hunter is brought in and tasked with the job of identifying how this ghost looks before it takes on a human form. This ghost hunter represents all the physicists trying to determine what a particle is before it is observed. First, the ghost hunter places a hidden camera inside the haunted house. However, the clever ghost realizes it is being photographed and takes on a human form. Then, the ghost hunter thinks, perhaps the ghost knows when you place a camera inside its house. Let me try to photograph it from outside the house, a space which is way beyond the reach of the ghost. So, he places a mirror outside a window of the house and points his camera at the mirror. No one is looking directly at the ghost and no camera is pointing directly at the ghost. Now the ghost hunter is confident that he'll capture the image of the ghost. Did I mention that the ghost was very clever? Even in this arrangement, where the mirror and the camera are invisible to the ghost, he realizes that someone is spying on him. So he takes on a human form. Only his human form appears in the photographs of the mirror. The ghost is so clever that if you place just the camera and disable the recording, it knows that too. Although the camera is pointing at him, the ghost knows that he is not being recorded and remains in his ghostly form. This proves that it is not the camera that makes the ghost take the human form. The only thing that makes the ghost take on a human form is a conscious observer. In desperation, the ghost hunter calls his friend who is a time traveller. Together, they make what they believe is a foolproof plan to capture the image of the ghost. The ghost hunter removes all his equipment and departs the scene. Now, the ghost would think that the ghost hunter is gone and remain in its ghostly form. The following day, the time traveller would go back in time and see how the ghost looked like on the previous day. 
In this arrangement, the ghost cannot go back in time and change his past form. He is not a time traveller, isn't it? So, the ghost cannot alter his form when the time traveller arrives from the future. The past is already done and dusted. So, whatever form the ghost was in that past moment cannot be changed now. As planned, the following day, the time traveller travels to the previous day and enters the haunted house. What do you think he sees when he meets the ghost from the past? Amazingly, he sees the ghost in human form. Again, I repeat, he does not see the ghostly form. He sees the human form. How is this happening? There are only two possibilities both of which are equally incredible. Either the ghost has knowledge of the future, some information from the future is getting transmitted to it, or the ghost reads the mind of the ghost hunter and understands his intentions. So even though the ghost hunter has removed all his detectors, the ghost is not fooled. He takes on a human form even when no one is observing him in the present moment. Because he knows tomorrow someone will come back to this moment and look at him. Take a minute to absorb this. We saw how Einstein was appalled by the idea that particles millions of light years apart seemingly communicate with each other instantaneously as if no space exists between them. What would he have said about these time-travelling particles that can look into the future and change their behaviour as though time did not exist at all? In this analogy, I have described the ghost as a thinking and intelligent being capable of taking smart decisions. I want to clarify that a particle does not have all these characteristics. It is neither conscious nor intelligent. It is not a particle which chooses to come into existence. It is the conscious observer that brings particles into existence. Let me summarize. This is how particle behaves. It does not exist before someone observes it. No one can say what it is or where it is before being observed. As soon as someone makes an observation, it comes into existence. Even when it is not directly observed, but a conscious observer has the ability to indirectly deduce its presence, it comes into existence. It also knows if an observation is going to happen in the future and changes its present behavior accordingly. Don't think for a moment that this is some fringe theory or just speculation from my end. In my last video titled, How did scientists prove that the universe is not real? We saw the experiment that was carried out on entangled particles. I have provided a link in the description below. In fact, these scientists had to take into consideration the influence of their intentions on the particles. If the experiment was set up with the intent to observe these particles, then they cannot rule out the possibility of this influencing the behavior of particles. This was a real stumbling block in coming up with the experiment. That's why it took so long to prove this theory. How can scientists do an experiment without having any intentions? Then a group of scientists at MIT came up with an ingenious method to overcome this hurdle. They used light from two distant stars to decide how a particle would be measured. They used the light emanating from a special pair of celestial objects called quasars. Instead of the scientists deciding how the particles would be measured, they would use the frequency of light coming from these quasars to determine the type of measurement to be carried out. One quasar emitted its light 7.8 billion years ago and the other 12.2 billion years ago. The light from these two sources was used to choose how a particle is measured. Imagine there are multiple cameras pointed at the two entangled particles which can take pictures of the particle from different angles. The frequency of light from these quasars determined which camera would be switched on at any given moment. Because this light emerged billions of light years back, much before the experiment was even conceived, 
it eliminated the possibility of the thoughts and intentions of the scientists interfering with the experiment. Please note that this is no ordinary experiment. It is one of the experiments that won the Nobel Prize for Physics. Imagine setting up an experiment, taking into consideration the impact of intentions on the outcome of the experiment. Before the advent of quantum physics, people would have laughed at this and labeled the scientists as quacks. Now this is a serious and important subject warranting a Nobel Prize. This just shows how central consciousness has become to physics. Let us now look at all the different ways in which consciousness impacts and shapes reality. Only a conscious observer can bring a particle into existence which implies that the entire tangible universe comes into existence because of conscious observers. Consciousness has profound impact on space and time itself. Take entangled particles. When an observer looks at one particle, the twin particle also springs to existence even if they are separated by billions of miles. When particles millions of light years apart can mirror each other instantaneously when observed, you must conclude that the act of observation has caused the space between them to disappear. Similarly, the distinction between past, present and future disappears for a particle when it is observed. The intention and actions of the observer has the power to change the past behavior of a particle. The arrow of time which moves linearly from the past to the present to the future disappears because of the observer. This is why quantum physics says that the universe is not real. It is as though time and space disappear for a particle in the presence of consciousness, just like an illusion. This is the vast, indescribable, unimaginable power of consciousness. It brings the universe into existence. It makes time and space itself disappear. So, how is science making sense of these findings? These discoveries have only given rise to more questions. We have still not fully answered the fundamental question. Who is an observer? What is a conscious entity? How did the universe exist before the arrival of conscious beings? Does consciousness exist outside of human beings? In my next post, we will examine the various scientific theories around consciousness. We will also see how closely it aligns with our ancient philosophy. That's it from me. Thank you for watching. If you like this post, please let me know by clicking on the like button. Please share it with your friends and like-minded people. Until next time, Namaste.